As I re remind you, if you recall, I said that I was going to be reading an excerpt each show from my book, Nita, or Nita, as my mama and my grandmama would say. My grandmother said, I said Lita. <laughs> she called me Lita, Lita, not Nita. But anyway, so let's take it up. Thanks, shout out to my girls out there all. Thank you for all of your love and support of me and my art, of my sisters far and wide. Thank you so much. Um, let's go, I'm gonna read a quick excerpt. I was in the Navy, I'm a vet, so here we go. During the night in the barracks, there were different sounds to hear that wove themselves in and out of the old hollowed openings which centered themselves in the dividing walls that surrounded us. Naturally, I thought it strange and having never been away from home, all the more so because we grew up sleeping two to a bed until we each got our own and it was quite normal to bunk with sisters, brothers, or any other relative and so I learned to endure. Outside boot camp was an entirely different world of civilians who depended on us for protection, security, and above all, for information. Should be the country be seized by any, or information should the country be seized by any outsider unknown forces, you know, can often happen. Off base clearance was always welcome because it gave us something to look forward and became Baltimore was a small town in those days that acted like a highly charged magic for mischief and mayhem. The city had an impressive diversity that I really didn't pay much attention to at that time. But whenever we were lucky enough to get passes to go off base for the weekend, it might as well have been as if we were going off to an entirely other country. So there, you have my excerpt for this week and for this show. Stay tuned for the next time and I'll read a little bit more of Nita. Meanwhile, stay safe, stay healthy out there, and be good. Bye. Hey, everybody. What's up out there in pandemic world? You know, we are doing our best to stay safe and healthy out there, but still, we have a little bit of that pandemic aura still around us so still please take care of yourselves i will do the same so we can all keep seeing each other i love my audience and i adore my fans so those of you who i can't hug ha feel me i'm on the screen hugging you tight so today for 15 minutes to show you know we do it live i am your show host osiris and we are in our lovely nirvana hollywood studios with my guy eric hey eric shout out Today, we have an amazing, amazing person, you guys. Okay, it doesn't get any better than this. This man, number one, he uses pencils, papers, pens, anything that he can find that would allow him to express himself. He calls himself the pencil artist, the pencil man, the pencil artist. He's a sketch artist to some, I think someone Ask me was he a sketch artist, but in case you've never heard of him, he's very, very famous, so shame on you if you haven't. His name is Clarence Pointer, and he, we are so happy to have him in our studios today live. So everybody welcome him. Say, hey, Clarence. Hey, pencil man. How are you? I'm fantastic. Can you hear me okay? I can. Good. Now, first of all, I notice he has dimples. That's the first thing I notice when I'm looking at his face. He has dimples. So nice smile, everyone. So let's start like this. How I, I read your bio. So I know that you now did you grow up in Alabama? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because you say yes, ma'am. I love that. Yes, ma'am. That's that southern caress and that southern behavior that we've lost in translation but thank goodness there are some of those of us that still have that and your family at a very early age discovered that you could draw and so they were impressed that you could draw and actually started to support you buying you pencils pens whatever you needed so let's start from when you found out you can draw to what happened for you to say, this is my mission in life, this is what I'm supposed to do? Well, you know, at a very early age, 
uh, it was in, in, embedded in me. You know, uh, art, I didn't find I could draw because it was already in me already. It just came out. Oh. So everybody got a talent. Uh, it finds you. You know, so it found me. And uh, I never had that stick figure syndrome. And I went straight to drawing. You So you didn't need to do the prep. You're an intuitive. You didn't need to go to school. Nobody needed to show you anything. You just organically picked up a pencil and became one. And there we are, we're pencil to paper. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I wasn't as, go ahead. I wasn't as good as I am now, of course. My skill level grew over the years. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it took years to, to cultivate uh, uh fine-tune to my current skill level, but uh, I had great support. Like I said, my family, uh, a few other in, in, people around me were very supportive, encouraging. Um, I went to college, though, for like six months. So when you, and I read that, when you went to college for six months, how did you choose to spend your time? Did you spend it learning more about the art of drawing, or what did you do there? Well, it's a bittersweet scenario. <laughs> Yo, let me hear it. Let us hear it. Well, those six months, I felt that I was one of the best kids in the class. Even though the other kids were promising, right? They had, you know, they had prior uh, lessons Experience. and schooling and stuff. But my, my stuff was more spot on, you know. However, the instructor didn't give me the proper instruction or criticism or yeah. uh, you know and they gave you the information you needed what, to fit her realm of thinking so my realm of thinking even to this day when, when I talk to other artists I said you have your own style do you you know don't let someone convert you to how they want you to be be who you are so mm -hmm. on that note I gotta be in that class Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, if I think I'm the best, I feel I should get an A. So that B devastated me. I stopped drawing for two years. Oh, you stopped? Now, when you stopped drawing, did you feel like you were having some kind of breakthrough, breakdown? You had to, like, get back in there and get yourself together? What happened? I, I just was done with drawing because that B said that, you know, regardless of how good I am, People are not gonna think I'm good enough, basically, mm -hmm. in my head. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's that's how I felt, and I didn't, didn't want to pursue it. But God had different direction for me. <laughs> now, how did you get involved? It, I read something about Sports Illustrated. How did you get involved? Huh? Go ahead. Sports Life, Sports Life magazine. Sports Life magazine. What happened? How did you get involved with them? Well, see. <laughs> How that happened was, how the kids say now, what had happened was. <laughs> what had happened? What had happened was. <laughs> CEO, yeah. the CEO of the magazine, uh, had been following me on social media. You know, we were friends, but I didn't know what he did, per se. Uh, and um, I, I post a lot. I post a lot of art on my page because I'm a, that's that's what I'm, I'm about art. So I post a lot of art on my page, and he saw it one day, and said, "Look, uh, he sent me a message on Messenger. He said we need to talk. So here's my number. So I called him. And he was pretty much said, "Look, I need you to be the face of my magazine, because your artwork is out of this out of the stratosphere. Wow. And I've been working with this magazine for a few years now. I need something." to spark it and you're the guy to make it spark. And so what were some of the things that you had to do? I mean, did they did they direct you just into sports or were you allowed to come up with your own themes or what happened? With, with each issue I create, they sent me uh, uh, an idea, a concept of who they want to be on the cover type scenario. And I maybe about 10 images to choose from so I might incorporate all those images into one to make it to where I want it to be. 
Okay. I got I have, I have free rings to create anything as long as it's, it's, it's fits to uh, the rim of their topic for the cover. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, as an, I'm an artist myself, as you know, and the funny thing is that people that take drawing classes, um, the instructor said that she thought that you, ne you need to know how to draw in order to really paint. Do you, do you think, is that true? Is that true to you? Why? Tell me why. Drawing is Tell us the, why. Yeah, drawing is the, uh, the foundation of all art, period. Once you can draw and capture dimensions, mm -hmm. uh, you can do sculptures, you can do paintings, you can do watercolor, you, anything mm -hmm. but drawings, uh, it's the foundation of, of any, like, it's like crawling is the foundation for walking. <laughs> you know? so, yeah. so, so drawing, you, you, you develop those, those uh, fundamentals to, to go to the next stage. And but but if someone doesn't know how to draw, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will prevent them from painting or anything, does no. it? No. Okay. No, because painting, you can just paint shapes and put them together. You yes, know, you as long as you got as long as you got a concept of uh, of uh, uh, proportions, you, you're good. You can you can work that. You know. Yeah. Uh -huh. So is there a fine line? Do you find that there's a fine line between drawing and painting or drawing and other forms of art like watercolor and, you know, gouache and even illustrative collage work? All of that is, you know, I think it's inter interrelated. Art is so diverse. I mean, it's, you can pick and, pick and pull and, you know, and whatnot and, and blend this and blend that together. Uh -huh. um, so it's, it's like a big puzzle. <laughs> it's like a what? A big puzzle. Uh, and you just put it, put it all together and integrate it. Right. Some, some people, they mix pen and ink with watercolor, mm -hmm. uh, uh, watercolor with color pencils. Mm -hmm. So you can mix it all together. But mm -hmm. the bottom line is you have, to ha you have to have an eye for it. You got to have an eye uh, to see what you envision to put on the paper. It could be, I just use having to use a pencil because for me it's easier. If I, if I make a mistake, I can erase. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can. So as an, as an artist, um, do, what are some of the tools that you would advise someone that's interested in becoming a sketch artist, a painter, or whatever, and that kind of expression? What are some of the tools that you would say that are absolutely got to have on your palette? The first thing is quality project. Whatever it is that you buy, make sure it's, it's quality. Make, make sure it's a good, doesn't necessarily have to be expensive, but especially, but good quality. That's quality, okay. man. Pencils aren't they, aren't they expensive, uh, but you need a, a variety of ones to capture what you want to capture on paper. Now, are there any particular brands that you recommend? Hmm. Christmas color is good. And there's a few other ones that are pretty good. Um, but most of the ones in, in the art stores are of quality. Up, up to par. Up to par. So after good quality and so after good quality and good quantity, you have a good thing. What are some of the other tools that you must have? Do you need air? Do you need a room? Do you need a window? Do you need a box to sit on? What do you need? Spill the beans. You, you need uh, uh, I need an eraser. You need erasers. Uh -huh. So an eraser. E erasers. Just different ones you can use. The black okay. ones, the black white ones. Okay. Uh, needed ones like play doh. Uh, a variety of pencils from dark to, right. to light to, uh, tone leads. You know to capture the right uh, proportions and uh, uh, complexions rather of everybody because everybody is different. Like you looking at you right now, you're about a B. I'm what? A B, lead pencil. <laughs> Why? Because I'm brown. Yeah, see, you know, <laughs> just the tone, the softness of, of the lead. I'm more of a, a three B. I'm a little darker than you are. I know what a B is. I know what you're talking about because I take drawing classes actually. But but uh, and and it's not that I couldn't draw organically. 
they're more abstract drawings than actually knowing how to do the figures. So I can do, I can draw something looking at it, but I didn't know the structure of drawing. And I didn't know how to apply it to painting. So as a media person here in LA, they offered us free drawing classes while we were in quarantine. So that's how I got into drawing. So I know about the different pencils, but explain to the fans out there what you know why the different pencils like why would somebody need a different pencil what is the difference between the dark and the light and those things oh absolutely i mean the soft leads are like hb 9b straight graphite soft leads that's for the dark areas like your blouse mm -hmm. you're wearing that's a a, a a 9b to the most because it's extremely dark easily and soft <laughs> and soft like your hair your hair is more of a, a h or hb Cause it's got that 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 silvery, uh, uh blondy uh, kind of right. So the the wow. lighter, the, lighter the, the, the area, the harder the pencil, like elf. Uh, uh, we explain, but explain that they don't know anything about. I mean, if they do, I, I'm not saying my people out there, you don't know anything. But just assuming that all of us are beginners, we're now we're not professional drawers or artists in that way drawing. But what would an F be, an H, and does it mean it's the heavier lead, it's a lighter lead, or? Yes, yeah, like elf, uh, Fine. Uh, three H, you know, two H, those numbers like that are very hard. Uh huh. So that's for the, the tones of the skin or tones of the hair. If you got blonde hair, it's like an H at the most. But see, blonde hair has dark areas too. So you got right, right. to know which pencil to pick up to get the, the, the realistic that color, that tone. Right, right. So, <laughs> uh, so like, I've used several different layers based on the softness and the hardness. Like I said, the softness is the darker and the harder the, uh, the, the lighter. And you know, and once you start playing with it a little bit, picking one up, Make a mark on your paper. You get you learn to know uh, the difference between the hardness and softness and what it does for you. And then, question: Do you think or feel that anyone can be an artist, or do you feel that some people, no matter how much they go to school, their parents have forced them to take art classes? They're going to study art and this because I have. Trust me, I've experienced one of those things. Well, yeah, and I'm going to do this and that. But they're really not an artist. It's never going to come out. What is that about? Explain it to people so that it doesn't feel like one is being discouraged from expressing. But also, I do think that something has to be organically inherent for you to be drawn to or it to draw you to that, you know? What do you feel about that? What are your thoughts? Thoughts is either you have it or you don't. Exactly. <laughs> it's, I really that it's, re it's really that simple. And now, I'm not going to say now that you can't. If, if you got to learn to do it, you're not passionate about it. Now, you got to be passionate about it to progress. So if you're not really passionate about it, as much as someone try to push you or you. Or encourage you and stuff. Won't matter. It's not, not going to happen. Won't matter. Wow, that's so interesting. So, do you do other art? You know, our show's only fifteen minutes, so it's kind of getting to the to the hour of that. But do you have any other mediums of expression that you you know that you talk about when you're? Do you? I know you've done Smokey Robinson. You've done Jada Pinkett Smith. You have sketched uh, Melba Moore, you've sketched groups, you've sketched institutions. I think you're up for one of the, um, you're up for something I was reading, you're up for some, uh, uh, some project now that is a big, it's an Olympic project, am I correct or no? Uh, I'm, I'm, what's, that, what's that again? You're up for some sketch project now I was reading. You're working on something now. Yeah, I'm, doing, I'm always doing something. And I got <laughs> the gospel groups. You know, things like I got one I'm working on right now for uh, I really can't say. Yes. But I got I got two art exhibits coming up in some art museums uh at California 
the African American Museum, a one in the uh, uh, Anaheim Museum down there. I just finished one for, uh, I can't think of her name right now, but she's the president of a, uh, a black university in Mississippi. You've got them everywhere. I was like, wow, and he's done this, and he's done smoke around, and he's done, man, I'm like, okay, now, and has he done Osiris? <laughs> you know, she's next. But, you know, but the ones that really stand out the most are the ones that at the top of that presentation uh, mark, like Rosa Parks, uh, Bill Duke, uh, uh, Big Gregory. And were, you a were you able to do Dr. Maya Angelou? I did, yeah. but you know, it, I got it done with hopes of getting it to her, and she passed about a month after I was finished. Oh, I know. I had the opportunity to, to meet her at when I, I graduated from Sonoma State in Northern Cal, and it was her and Intozaki Shanghai, and a whole group of them were on that Northern California circuit at the time. So wow. I'm happy we made contact. But listen, we are getting close to our 15 minutes. I would love to talk to you more, but we like to keep it kind of mm, short and sweet, so they want some more. You know, they have to dig. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you know, I kind of want to get not give it all to them at the first, at the first time. You know. So now, where can we find you? What can? How can we find more about you? What your next project? You can't divulge who the subject or the matter, the subject of the matter is, but you can tell us that you are very busy and where we can find out more about you and your art. Oh yeah, this. Uh, I gotta start updating my, updating my website to put all my events <laughs> on there. Uh, but everything uh, on ClarencePointer.com, you know, if one can be acquainted, they can go there and read my bio. Like I said, it's, a, it's like a short story. So, uh, cool lady, popcorn Ray, you know. But wait a minute, and I listened to the video on YouTube with Gene Chandler. <laughs> I was, bro, he sounded good. And what did you do? Were you, he was going to introduce you or something? Did, did you have a, a, a piece there? Right. But they, they called me because uh, he was being uh, presented an award. And they wanted something that was more, uh, I guess, thought giving than a plaque or uh -huh. one, some personal done. So I, they called me to do that. Okay. And I, when I presented it to him, uh, he was shocked. Mm -hmm. I know he was blown away. Oh my gosh, you, you are, fa he, isn't he fascinating everyone? Don't you just love somebody that can sketch and draw and all that? But listen, we gotta go. It's been 15 minutes, it goes by fast, especially when you're having fun. Let's thank our guest again today, Mr. Clarence Porner. We call him the pencil man, the artist. I call him a man with a pencil and a sense of purpose is what I call him, the two P's, pen pencil and purpose. So anyway, for those of you that haven't heard of him, please find out more about him. He is one of our, one of our own, homegrown of course, from Alabama, and one of our own artists here from the United States of America that's very, very well recognized. As for me, I am your host again, Osiris Munir with 15 Minutes to Show. Don't forget to check me out. You know you want to on YouTube. My website is www.express in the abstract, the words, dot net. Again, express in abstract, that's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-I-N, A-B-S-T-R-A-C-T dot net. And Ankh Entertainment One dot net is my blog. That's A-N-K-H and then the word entertainment. And don't forget the one, O-N-E dot net. See you next time. As for Mr. Clarence Pointer, let's say bye. Thanks him for coming to our studio. Again, ClarencePointer.com if you want to find out more about him. You can also find out more about him on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye, bye.